the very warm welcome to you and thank you so much for joining us, Fendele. Well, let's just start with this with this discussion of, of the regulation, and I suppose now the economic regulation coming into part. Now, I was asking you at the beginning, are we talking economic regulation or are we talking about energy regulation? You said it's really important that we focus on economic regulation of the energy sector. What are the key points that are coming out of the discussions that you're having? At the conference? Mm -hmm. Um, we, we had organized the conference in the first place just to bring together uh, practitioners, academics, stakeholders within the economic regulation space so that there's some discourse and cross-pollination and capacity building. Um, the, today the discussion centered, started out talking about the general theory and approach of economic regulation and what that is about. And then we had a set of presenters that looked at how NERSA has fared in the last 12 years of economic regulation that they have been uh, conducting. We had speakers from outside the country talking about experiences in the US and in India. And, and the, the, the gentleman from the US folk, um, focused on the fact that the issues that we're grappling with in South Africa are issues that they're still grappling with despite 100 years of, of regulation. And so, and so what is the way forward? Because one of the things that has been said is that it's really important for probably private players to be able to, to, to come into the sector. And before the interview, I, I was saying to you that we had an interview with, um, an, an, with, with an organization, South African Independent Power Producers Association, and they were saying the regulation, and particularly the bill that is before Parliament now, makes it so difficult for independent players to actually come into the market? As, as regulators, I must be careful here, we are implementers of policy and not makers of policy, and we also respond to legislation. But in our own view, having seen the developments on the, le on the legislative landscape, we believe that those developments would facilitate the entrance of new and private players into the South African energy system. By the way, it's not unnatural, it's not abnormal to have monopoly players in the energy sector. The whole world over, it's characterized either by monopoly players, alternatively co perfect competition, where five or six players would dominate the market and it would be difficult for others to come in. B but let's talk about that because isn't one of the things that you would like to do is uh, just in terms of at the end of the day, I think consumers just want to have energy. Where the energy is coming from, I don't think people really would care about where it's coming from as long as they have it. But one of the things that we've had in this country is that we've had shortages of, of energy, when yes. particularly electricity. Absolutely important, Hannah. Our mandate is to ensure that energy services are not only accessible to South African consumers, but they are available, so security of supply, and affordable. And given the fact that you've got monopoly players who are likely to want maximum profits, the, the need for regulators is to ensure and create a mechanism of making sure that customers are not overreached and that they pay fair prices. Is that, is that going to change though? Is that model going to change where we're going to see other players other than just ESCOM in the market? The stated policy of government is to introduce private players um, into, this, into the, and particularly the electricity sector, and we've seen that happening. We've had a small uptake of, 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 of private players in the, in the uh, coal-fired uh, sector, but with the renewable energy sector, there has been a major uptake on the government's renewable energy program of independent producers. So one of the things that we have discussed in the program is the independent system and market operator bill. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what was argued about that is, is that, that it's, even though it seems as though it's supposed to be introducing independent players, there's so many restrictions that again make it difficult. And, and that the amendments that are before parliament now are just making it that much more difficult that even companies that would like to be able to produce their own power for their operations are being restricted to do so. What is the move forward from that? That's not our experience as NARSA. In fact, we have licensed and registered a number of own consumption producers. We've got rules for access to the grid code where those people have to use the grid to get the supply to their uh, operations if they're not at the same place as where they generate. So that's the first thing. Secondly, our own understanding of the independent system and market operator bill is that it's got standard provisions that you find in such bills in the whole world that enables third party participants. The reality is that we have not had that experience in this country and possibly people are expressing more their fears about the new system that will be introduced. Let's talk a little bit about funding because I think tariffs and pricing and, and, and you come under a lot of fire when it comes to, to, to that issue. Going forward, what can consumers expect? What can business expect when it comes to tariffs and pricing and, and how that's going to go? We are currently in an environment where our government has commenced a process of infrastructure investment 
and they haven't said much about funding other than the fact that users will have to, to, to pay for the services. Now the reality is that somebody's got to pay for the services and the services are essential for economic and social economic development in the country. So as NERSA, in the way we will be looking at tariff applications that will be brought to us, we will be ensuring that consumers are not overreached, that they are fairly treated. However, we need to ensure that the operators, the suppliers of the services also recover their costs that they put in to, to create um, the power. At the end of the day, could we, could we see South Africa having high energy prices like we do see in some countries where it does become difficult, and, and difficult in the sense that probably not as comparable, you know, in terms of, of what we're paying, but that from the history that we're coming from that we didn't have to pay as much as we're probably paying now and going forward from what you're saying, it seems like we're going to be paying a whole lot more for energy. Price increases um, at the moment would be a function of the fact that it's a high investment period that we are in at the moment. So the last MYPD determination granted ESCOM 25%, 25%, and on the outer year, they were meant to get 25%, yet that came down to 16%. I, I cannot comment about what the MYPD3 decision will be. However, all we're saying is that what happened in MYPD2 is that we ended up cutting the outer year. The discussion about what's going to happen right now, because again, I bring, I bring the, 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 uh, the interview that we had from the, the, the Independent Powers uh, Association, and they were saying that from their point of view, it seems as though what, what, what policy is doing right now and what government is doing right now, it seems to be dealing with a long-term problem, and they, there doesn't seem to be much of a plan of what are we going to do right now with the crisis that we have. How would you respond to that? Again, qualifying my position as being not a policy maker, we want to say that we believe that the South African government is seized with a, with a problem of energy shortage as we speak. Two power stations are being built that will be commissioned that will take us out of the tight system that we're in. So we've got Midupi under construction. The first units will come out to us at the end of 2013. And we've got Kusile, and the timeline has been uh, announced by, by ESCOM. And that, we believe, will provide immediate temporary relief in the very short to medium term and then of course there's a long-term program that has been outlined by government in its uh, um, integrated resource plan for 2020. Thank you so much for joining us Fendile.